everybody, Scout Crafty here again. As you can see, I'm working on Wednesday's project. Today is Monday, that means it's Mishmash Monday. I gotta get rid of some uh, film clips that I had into my uh, phone. And uh, we're gonna cover a couple subjects, have some new things coming up, so let's get started. Now, every time I go to Home Depot, I go down the tool aisle just to see what's going on, what's new, and, and these screwdrivers have caught my eye for over a year, and I don't know why. I just, every time I look at them and I pick them up, I don't buy them because if you look back here, it says that uh, it's a lifetime warranty, but you need the receipt, and I hate that. I hate when companies do that, but if you look here, what's interesting about it, you can see the name is actually inside of the uh, of the casting and it also has the caps the hit caps on the back the red and blue I just really like them it's just too bad that DeWalt has to come up with that you need a receipt for uh, for any kind of warranty but something interesting okay believe it or not this is my first pair of these and I'm sure some of you know what it is some of you may have never seen this before uh, what this is it's a uh, hose crimper or anytime you have to crimp something, you can even use it for any anything you need to kind of parallel almost uh, self-aligning jaws for. But it uh, specifically was made for crimping hose. So let's say you're working on a car and you need it to stop some fluid coming out or whatever. Or you just uh, put this between the, the jaws, try and get it centered between the rivets and squeeze it down. And that'll crimp and close the uh the hose until you can work on it or stop the leak or whatever you have to do but um always a, a you know an enjoyable variation of the vice grips that i never had before and i always wanted uh this is obviously a foreign made and i got it inexpensively but i just always wanted one of those and that's what that does okay uh next up is something pretty interesting this is older than all of us uh this is a meteorite and uh just to think about where this came from right i used to uh, bring things like this into show and tell for the scouts and say, you know, just imagine this could be the remnants of some planet that exploded after the sun went supernova and uh, who knows where this came from and how many millions of light years away this originated. But uh, one of the things that you could tell, you know, immediately right besides the crusty surfaces, it's uh, because of the high iron content, a magnet will stick to it. But what I didn't realize, because I, I've seen some of these, they cut them in half and they polish them down and they have some real cool insides to them. But uh, I, I put a little bit on the wire brush and let me show you what okay, here we are at the wire brush and uh, watch what happens when I address this meteorite to the uh, to the wire brush. So you can see how hard this is, you know, I mean, you can feel the weight of it too. I mean, it's, it's just tremendously heavy for the size, but, um, and that's where we hit it with the wire brush. So if you wanted to cut this in half, you'd need some kind of a uh, special geodetic saw or something. So I guess there goes my aspirations of cutting this in half and polishing it down. <laughs> this is going to have to wait till I get better equipment, but, uh, pretty cool. I wonder where it's from. Okay. Next up. I don't know if you ever saw this product before, but I, I thought it was pretty amazing when I saw it. It's called easy towel. I got these through Amazon. They're not inexpensive, but they're uh, biodegradable. And um, you can see here, this is what the packaging looks like. You could buy it in a package like this, or you can get it in like in a 12 or so in, in a tube, things like this. But here's what it looks like. It's a tablet. And you can see here, you can see this tablet. And, um, and over here, what this tablet does, it's a compressed towel. And in this little tablet here, which is, you know, you could almost mistake it for a pill. You just dip it quickly into some water, just like that. And it, it uh, activates it. And what it does is you could see you pull it apart here. And this will open up into a pretty substantial size uh, towel or rag or something. And obviously because you dipped it in water, it's a little bit damp, but it's great for cleaning up and things like that. This makes a fantastic polishing cloth because it's almost like a, a cross between a cloth and a, uh, a paper. And it's, it's quite strong, durable. Um, and it's very soft to the touch. It's very nice, very, uh, interesting material. So I just thought I would uh, show that to you because I thought it was pretty interesting. And it's called easy towel. Good for the, uh, you know, in an emergency or something to have on you. 
Okay, now you remember a couple weeks ago I was talking about the Bernard pliers and William Bernard, who was the uh, credited with being the inventor of the parallel action pliers like this. And um, so I said I was kind of late coming to the game. I'm, I'm catching them up. I'm pretty much there. But I picked these up. I got them up in a, in a lot. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these up and then I want to talk about some of the interesting variations. Okay, please excuse the gloves, but they're all uh, cleaned up, lubricated, and uh, they're ready for my uh, Bernard box, more or less. So I'm going to keep them. I plan to use some of these. Let me just go over some of the unusual ones that you might not okay, have seen. Okay, first off, we have the uh, small Bernard. Remember, Bernard had over 100 patents on different pliers, but you could see here how this would surround and encapsulate the, uh, the fastener, and it would adjust to different sizes. So for a small plier, this was... Uh, Quite useful. These next two are smaller. Uh, you can see how small these are, but this one I like because you can see the date here it was 1892, uh, July 19th. So I have the other one that's that old, but uh, you can see here these had the open handle design, and uh, you can see it has the spring there. Now this one here has a closed handle design, but the spring I think that is an amp that was done maybe by somebody else. Now you can see here the man who owned it or or lathrop and uh i don't know if you if anybody has any idea if you think that's a aftermarket or you, you they definitely don't look like something that bernard would design so uh, it's just an interesting thing that i guess somebody wanted a a spring version and couldn't get it with the uh, closed handle so i thought that uh, was next you could see a later version when sergeant took over the bernard line you could see here nicely embellished on the handles um regular wire cutter here not made for anything heavy but you can see here it does uh, it does work. It's a, a spring action affair, and uh, that's it. Okay, here's another pair of Bernards, and you can see um, a Bernard on on the handles here, closed handle. Um, a lot of times here, the, you can see the nickel is starting to peel off. I wasn't going to deal do a full resto on that. Uh, this one here I thought is really interesting. This one here is uh, it's like a diagonal cutter, you know, spring action. It must be very old because you can see by here. Again, a Bernard, so it's before Sargent, you know, pre-40s. Um, it does, It's again, it's not made for uh, very difficult, uh, hard wire, but it does cut. And But look at the uh, the beautiful, well, this ain't patina, it's like a bluing on here. And I don't know what that is, but that's a bluing, and it's really nice how that is. Uh, next we have, I guess they were trying to save on uh, different designs. Again, he had a hundred and something patents. And here is a design with very little, you can see there's no forging, like if you had your regular Bernard, you had to have a forged top piece here or, or solid steel. This is all stamped here in the top, and it still works the same. Also, if you look on the inside of the, the, the Bernard, you can see here the you know steel pieces here and over here, it's all stamped. So this might have been a wartime production. does have the wire cutters on the side here. I didn't try them yet. Yeah, they work very nicely. So, um, interesting design, this one. I haven't seen this one before. Be interested to know what year this is from. And lastly, we have our Parrot Head. You could see here by the name, it says Parrot Head. And again, this is uh, this was made uh, during the Sergeant time. So this was uh, after the, you know, mid 40s, uh, late 40s. And um, over here, it has the Bernard hand grip on here. So this is probably when they were using up some old style. But look how nice that fits in the hand. And uh, to open it, you have to just slide this back, and you can see why they call it a parrot head. But this would be something good for like cutting hose and things like that because it has that kind of design and uh, gives you a nice clean cut. You know, even though this one has rope in the uh, in the tubing, uh, very nice design. I do like these pliers. I haven't seen these before. So, so that I'm one's closing. Cool. I'm always fascinated at the, the Bernard pliers and how old they are and how they still function like that. But uh, anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.